The wave came out of nowhere. With no warning, a 40-foot wall of solid water hit us like a freight train and was gone before we knew it. Suddenly, we were upside down, with water flooding through the companionway. break up. Sooner or later, a storm or a container ship, we're going down. Just keep calm, okay? Mm. That's the main thing. We'll be all right. Yeah. We just turned this thing the right side up. Can't. Impossible. Why not? Once a multi-hull capsizes, it stays that way. Fucked on the drawing board. Bloody death traps. Oh, we... we... Bring something up, make a mask, sail upside down. She's 75% underwater, all right? Unnavigable. Hey. We got food. We got water. I got tanks full of it, thousands of liters. We just have to wait. We'll be okay. I want you guys to relax. The only way forward was to adapt, learn to survive. They needed to accept the situation and go with it. But all they could think about was rescue. Escape hitch. Now someone's gonna hear us, right? How long before someone picks up a signal, you reckon? What to say? Not too many boats out here. They have to be a plane. Well, how close they have to be to pick up a signal? Depends on the conditions. I'd missed my scheduled departure date. My original crew had dropped out at the last minute and I needed to find replacements at short notice. Jim, check it out. I wanted to sail before the weather changed. John Glennie. Jim, pleased to meet you. Yeah, good to meet you. Oh. So what's the weather like in Tonga this time of year? Ah, oh, it's tropics, mate, you know. Sun, warm beaches, more beautiful women you can shake your stick at. 
I like the sound of that. Yeah, friendly islands. Hmm. Could do with a cook. You got any sailing experience? Absolutely none. Some. <laughs> oh, well, you know, it doesn't matter. I just need extra bodies to keep watch. How long would it take? Hmm, two weeks tops. Trade winds are pretty strong this time of year. You guys should come on down. Check it out. Sure. Could be just what you need, mate. Hey, get away for a bit, time to think, clear the air. What about you? Maybe. Seriously? Sure, why not? Doctor phone this morning. Gonna see it tomorrow, but, um, looks like I'm in the clear. I just can't see it's retreating. <laughs> Fantastic, man. Fantastic. Rose and Will leaving two days' time. What do you reckon? Go on. Write them down. Come on, Martha. Don't do this. I mean it. Write them down. What? The people I'll have to get in contact with when you drown. For Christ's sake, have some faith. You've never been to sea in your whole damn stupid landlocked life. You can barely swim. We decided to take a break to see if this is what we really want. Not that kind of break. That guy's gonna have you cooking from dawn till dusk. That is, when you're not throwing up, you get seasick in a kayak. Look, I'm sorry I can't be on call for you, but I really need to do this. Not your last will and testament, just a name and phone number in the States. Don't forget that. You'll need it. I'll wait in the car. Had a pick of moments, don't she? <laughs> Bloody air of departure. I suppose. Oh, you know, Martha, she's probably just thinking of the worst that could. Neither of us exactly keen on this idea. But it's good you're going. It's important. No regrets, all that. Well, you don't want to come down? No. I'm not big on public farewells, and it looks like Martha's in one of her moods. So. Be careful. Don't fall overboard. I won't. See you in a couple of weeks. Bye bye. Oh, this is going to be so good for him. Us girls, we'll look after each other. Where's your mate? Oh, she all right? Oh, come on, cheer up. They'll be fine. Just think of all the fun you'll have when you get them back. It'll be hot to trot. You know, it's, it's not that. We're breaking up. Hi, Jim. Good full of hand and fingers. I'd waited a long time for this adventure. Unfortunately, I wasn't sharing the first leg of the voyage with the men I wanted, but at least I had a crew. Once we made landfall in Tonga, I would replace them. This voyage was going to take me back to my old cruising haunts of the South Pacific. New beginnings, a fresh start, love and adventure. 
I'd invested everything I had in Rose Noel. She was my pride and joy, my home, my haven. What do you reckon, Jim? <laughs> Jim looks a bit green around the girl. Yeah, okay, right. She's all yours, mate. This was music to my ears. There'd be no beating into the wind. We'd sail on a broad reach all the way to Tonga and make faster time than I'd hoped. How's it going? Oh. Looks like he's putting up more sail. The plane would have to be close, within 100 nautical miles. Come on, John, honestly, how long before they find us? What are you going to remember of me? Of us? John. Five days. It's OK, mate. Five days and we'll be out of here. According to the Oracle. I estimated our position to be about 140 miles off the east coast. The e signal was well outside the reach of domestic aircraft. We'd need to pin our hopes on an international flight. I can't breathe. It's time you took a turn back oh, there. Geez. Oh, shit! Uh, oh, shit. Can't be much longer now, surely. Somebody's got to hear that signal. They will. Oh. We've been pretty lucky up till now. Lucky? In what way have we been lucky? Well, if one of us had been on deck when that wave hit, would have been curtains. If we cut the parachute, we would have been fine. Hey. It was your idea to put it out in the first place. Remember that. What's that supposed to mean? You knew the storm was coming. You put us out or you risked our lives. All right, we're good, guys. Leaving on a journey and arriving at a destination is the best part of cruising. To be honest, I dislike blue water sailing. It bores me to tears. The excitement of bad weather and long night watches soon wears off. For me, it was all about seeing the world and taking my home with me. There's a man who knows what he's doing. Who have you left behind? You have someone in Australia? Oh, more interested in who could be selling towards, mate. Hey, who's the lady in the picture down below? Well, that is the original Rose Noel. It's Asian princess. Named the boat after her. Love my life. You still love her? In spirit. You're going a bit fast, John, don't you think? I mean, we're not that much of a bloody hurry, are we? Well, I want to get as far as we can before nightfall. Well, why? Well, the weather's changing. The weather's changing? What do you mean? What's it doing? Well, there's a storm coming. And we're going to catch it. It'll be on us pretty soon. And then we'll do some real sailing. <laughs> A little knowledge is a dangerous thing. I don't like this. I really don't like this. Phil had limited coastal sailing experience. Maybe that's why he was so anxious. His fear was contagious. How long is this going to last? What's the big surprise? If you guys heard the rain forecast, you would have known about this. This storm's going to blow us all the way to Tonga in no time. Yeah. You sailed us into a storm on purpose? <laughs> Get it! Get it! Good! 
Get on the radio, man. Fuck you. Pull the coach down. Get us. The helicopter, get us up. Hey, hey, hey. That radio's short range. There's no one out here to hear you. Why? Why what? Why is it short range? Because I don't have a license. Why not? Because I don't believe them. I don't want to waste the money. When you're out here, you're out here. That's your journey, you're on. Fuck you, mate. We got a flip. We're not gonna flip. Oh. This yacht can't flip. I sell 40,000 miles on one of these. This is just another blow. Yeah, when was that? 20 years ago. Yeah. I built this baby with my own hands. We've already crossed the Tasman together. <laughs> you're safe, Fred. Relax. <laughs> Uh, what about a sea anchor? You got one of those? What for? Uh, what to stop us bouncing around while we rode it out? Yeah. Have you got one? Of course I have. Well, then let's throw it out, slice down a bit. No way. It's brand new. Cost me a lot of money. Well, uh, it won't turn any goods. Let's take a boat. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a bloody democracy, mate. Hey, fuck you! Where is it? <laughs> I made one big mistake. This was it. Allowing myself to be bulldozed by a terrified crew with no experience of blue water sailing. The noise of waves smashing against a multi hull is like gunfire. It can be terrifying if you're not used to it. What the, what the hell was that? Shoot must have failed. And we gotta free it. No, too dangerous. It's pulling your side on. No, you make a mistake pulling it in. You could lose a finger or a hand. Then we cut it loose. No. Hey! Tell us that. All we can do is sit tight and wait it out. We can't leave this shoot like that. I'm the skipper, Ed. Remember? Get some sleep. Sort of the morning when conditions improve. Send out distress signals. Any plane flying over here will pick it up. Me mate the master fighter. Insurance money? I'm not insured. I don't believe in it. I'm insured with the gods, not the bottom feeders. Hey, you're in my space, mate. What happens if a wave flips the boat the right side up? We're gonna be fine with all this water. It can't happen, okay? Won't happen. No, no. We've got to cut an escape hatch. You are not 
from cutting another hole in this bloody boat. Now, you have some respect for her, for me, for everything I put into it. No bloody way. This is our lives we're talking about. If you won't do it, I will. It was painful to watch, like the violation of a loved one. But Rick was not a man to argue with. Once he made his mind up, that was it. Breaking outside didn't make them feel any better. Seeing the magnitude of what we're up against, their morale sank to a new low. Any hope of a quick rescue seemed a distant prospect. Once the Ipu battery died, we were on our own. Outside standard flight paths and shipping lanes. Wind, current and the gods were taking us for a ride. The only control we had was over ourselves. Rick, Jim, give us a hand outside, eh? We needed to put differences behind us and work as a team. Give us a bloody hand, would you? I'm busy. I don't know why you're doing that anyway. No point. No bother. We need to make ourselves more visible to passing ships, planes, whatever, that's why.
Which was down there? Oh, Jesus! That's what you're doing. Take it easy, mate. I didn't mean to. Screw you, Rick. Look, look, I'm bleeding. Oh, get over it. Jesus, you're a bloody moron. And we ration all food from now on. Who says? It's the smart thing to do. We don't know how long we're going to be out here. And we're going to get hold of the sails. You're going to die for them tomorrow. I've told you already. You can't sell this boat upside down. And we make decisions by vote from now on. Majority rules and we stick to the rules. You used to be a cop, didn't you? Hey, let it go, Rick. Man, your emotional body is starving in your it. Have faith in the God within. You can shove your dumbass religion up your skinny ass. Rick, pass me the cabbage. Where's the knife? This one's shit. No. Ah! We got tuna. There was a lemon somewhere lying around on this leaking sill of a boat. Right, there we are. Spirit of a sailor Circumnavigates the globe Lucky I've just been six months in a leaky boat <laughs> <laughs> Lucky just, just to be afloat What song is that? It's a Kiwi classic, mate No A-O-T-O-R-O oh, yeah. I've got to get out of here Listen like a boat I think Rick felt he'd lost Jim to us, like someone had stolen his girlfriend. Or maybe something else was going on inside his head. Meanwhile, back home, Jim's girlfriend Martha was becoming concerned. By now, he should have made contact from Tonga. After three weeks adrift, no one had begun searching for us. able to get through anyway. I sat down. What did you say? You're not going to be able to get through. Gordon will radio for you. You arrange your time with John. What, what do you mean? Gordon's supposed to call him and get his position, but John's not going to be able to call him or name the boat because his radio is illegal. That's the deal. The deal? I heard him talking about it. Gordon's going to call him and give him a weather forecast. Well, why didn't you tell us this before? Your dad wouldn't have gone if he'd known they didn't have a proper radio. Hello. Hello? How do you drive this thing? Hello? Come aboard! So, I reckon they're out here somewhere. Okay, let's give it a go. Six one two eight point six. That's what John and I agreed. It's almost half past eight. You might be listening. Cargo calling Rose Noel. Do you read me? Your position, please. Over. Was that 28 degrees south? Please confirm or deny, Rose Noel. Over.
Something wasn't right. I'd filled the tanks to capacity with fresh water before we left. Where had it gone? For the first time I had doubts about our survival. When are you gonna check the water tanks, John? talking about in the tanks thousands of liters it's all gone what happened to it where's all the water gone well, <laughs> it must have drained out when we capsized it's drained out how come there are air vents in the tanks why don't you bloody well tell us well we need to stay calm uh, shit <sighs> you guys gotta face the facts well, we're gonna die and there's no point about your, your stupid mast or your stupid rationing. We, we, we've all had it. Fuck the lot of you. Well, oh, watch out. Jesus. Get ah. the knife. Get the knife. Ah. Fuck what? You drop it, you get it back. Ah. Hey, shit it. I brought a present for you. Put these on him. Piss off. Hey, the all fucked, why don't you swim for it? <laughs> bye bye, Phil. Fuck her off! It's not my fault, there's no bloody water! Rick, stop it! Come on! Ah, Rick! Rick, you son of a bitch! Ow! Rick! Stop it! Rick, leave him alone! Okay, I'll go down and look for the sails now. I'll do it now, alright? Is that good enough for you? Yeah, well, have you suddenly changed your tune? Because you're a dangerous man, Rick. Things go wrong, things don't go your way, you throw a wobbly. You don't trust. I'll get the sail. No, no, no. I'll do it. You? Yeah, sure. No, no, no. Bad idea, Phil. I should do it. I know where they are. Yeah, so do I. Fuck the lot of you. What if he doesn't make it? More of everything for the rest of us. You're out of line, Rick. Seriously out of line. Jesus. to lose control, and his setback could send him into a rage. He always needed someone to blame for his predicament. Usually it was me, but it could be anyone. It was only later I understood what was really driving him. He felt he was running out of time.
Thank God. I knew it. We're gonna make it. It was a sign. I knew we were being looked after. I have told you, mate, there's no fish out here. Nothing lives this far from the land. I am arranged. You've got to try. Hey, um, maybe we can have a water ration now. Nope. Still no sign of rain. Hey, guys. Check this out. I've been thinking. When we capsized, we would have been about here. Prevailing current. It's going that way. Take us maybe 10, 20 miles a day. So, after 34 days drifting, that would put us right off the map. But there's nothing there. Nothing until South America. That's gonna take us at least eight months. Possibly. Or the current could take us north along the line of the continent, but well out of the side of land. And that would add another thousand miles. Yeah. Just you wait. Your bikes are going to be famous. What the fuck are you doing? You're writing your memoirs? I haven't made my mind up yet. Might be a book. Might be a lovely ditch to my ex. Who? Rose Noel. The poor bitch you named this piece of crap after. Why'd she dump you anyway? She didn't dump me. She died in a plane crash. Pan Am 816. She's on the way to join me. Oh well. But there's been many women since my sweet Rose Noel. Too many. <laughs> sure, I mean, you're a real catch. Hmm? Sane, handsome, young, normal, sane. Sane! Rick, Rick, let's just... Let's play a game. Sure, why not? Yeah, that's a good idea. I'll play the winner. Piss off! You gotta take it easy on him. I know he's annoying, but... but nothing. Help me sit up. Tell him or shall I? What? You should do that outside. It's too windy. Phil lost the rod. That was the only rig we had. First the only decent bloody knife and now the rod. How bloody thick are you? I'm sorry, okay? No, not okay. It's everything else about you. You're a greedy, farting pig. Look at your head, mate. You look like you've been in a fight. When are you gonna learn how low the fucking roof is? I just wanna go home. Phil, it's okay. It's okay.
Hey guys, check this out. Something I've been working on. It's a collection system for water. These are PVC pipes. I got heaps of them in the starboard pontoon. What do you think? Uh, I, I don't see how you. How, how are you going to cut the pipes? Exactly. But how about. Why don't we use the surface of the hull as a, a catchment and we put wood along here and over here with drain holes here and here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, good on you, mate. Hey, now you're pulling your weight. Hey? Yeah. So, so, have we got any wood? survive a long time without food, but not without water. Over the weeks, we had reduced our rations to little more than two ounces of liquid each per day. It's been a bloody work. But now the precious water was almost gone. We were beyond thirst, suffering the onset of dehydration. Rick, what's that? It's a yacht. It's the beacon. Quick and the beacon. Come on, come on. Quick. Yeah. Guys, 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 it's too far out. They'll never see it. They'll never see it. Oh, good on you, mate. Brilliant. OK, stand back. Yeah, check it out. Come on, come on, come on. Forget it. It's gone. Yeah, a yacht like that shouldn't be out here. It's a sign. It's only not as close to South America as you thought. No, it's a sign from God. We're going to be OK. Enough! OK, no more! You give me a fucking headache! Everything in life happens for a reason. That yacht is a sign. We willed her to appear. Yeah. Just like you willed that storm to appear, eh? You fucking wanker! God only knows what you know. Don't you know that? Everything comes from within, don't fight it. One more word. I swear, one more word and I will fucking gag you! Rick, Rick, Rick. Rick? Yeah. Thank you, God, for bringing us this far, and thank you for what is to come. There is still no contact with the missing crew of the Rose Noel, which left Picton on June the 6th with four local men on board. The trimaran was expected to arrive in Tonga by the middle of the month. It is now six weeks overdue. <coughs> Following an unsuccessful search by RNZAF Orion, pressure is now mounting for a second search, despite the already considerable expenditure of public money.
It's raining! Water! It's raining! Get the bottles! Does Rick have a white cable knit jersey? No. Hmm. I see him in one. Very nice. <laughs> and gumboots. On an island. Which island? <laughs> I've asked the guides, but they won't tell me. Uh, the name is two words, five letters and seven letters. Rick's guide is here with us now. He's standing right behind you. He's telling us they're safe. Rick, Rick, come here, come here. Perfect. Yeah. And this? <laughs> okay. Excellent. We good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're good. We're good. That's all we need. of mates just like you. <laughs> no fish in the sea, eh, John? I will be now. They'll be coming for the bouncers in the huddle. Hmm. <laughs> when are you going to check those gas tanks, John? There's no telling how far they've paraded. My mistake blows all the bets. Come on. Let's just appreciate what we've got. We don't give thanks enough. 
Thank you, God, for sending us here. And please help John find his inner what have you so that we can use the bloody gas tanks. Amen. Oh, Amen. Amen. Harry's friends had begun to appear in numbers. After two and a half months at sea, the Rose Noel had become a floating reef. Our menu was expanding. Barnacles, seaweed and kingfish. Plenty of kingfish. Oi! Imagine that fried. I'm not going to give up on the gas tanks, John. You find them. Or I will. You wouldn't like that. I might hurt your precious bloody boat. All right! Okay, Jim, turn it on. Okay, it's coming. Shouldn't you be on your knees, John? Praying? Gonna get the big one. They're all roughly the same size. Pigs ass. It's your birthday, am I right, Rick? My first choice. Don't worry, Phil. You can have the biggest mate. Jeez. Bloody beautiful. Hollow victory, isn't it? Could have hit this months ago. He knew exactly where those tanks were. We didn't have to wait for this time to have hot bloody food. We have to fight for everything. It's like we're not suffering enough for him. It's true, mate. It's true. And every idea we have, he scoffs at. He uses his knowledge of the boat to build a power over us. Hey, the most important thing is we got gas now, hot food. How good's that? Him son sound like him. Like he went there. What the hell's wrong with you? He's the one that got this whole thing rigged up. I just... Just be thankful. Fuck you! Hey, why are you defending him now, eh? Sad shit! You pussy with fucking yank! Hey! Hey! Guys! Jesus! Hey! Despite our improving situation, Rick's moods were becoming darker, more erratic. Not even Jim was safe from his fits of temper. Yes! Oh, come on! I got it! 
Albatross burritos and a tomato puree. Delicious. You're a bloody artist, Jim. Well, what's supposed to happen if you kill uh, an albatross? The ancient mariner was doomed to wander the ocean forever. The ancient mariner didn't fry his, so I think we get a pass. So much food, we could have people over. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, mate. Nice one, Rick. Keep you warm on watch. For he's a jolly good fellow. For he's a jolly good fellow. For he's a jolly good fellow. And so say all of us. Hip hip! Hooray! Hip hooray! What's up, man? You right? I couldn't have had a better birthday. <laughs> Doesn't make sense to be happy out here. Most of us gathered here have sailed the South Pacific, and most of us know John Glennie. So far, our requests to mount another search have been fruitless. So it may be that we have to find the money ourselves. Some. $15,000 per hour of flying time. Does anybody recall anything that he might have said about the route? Yeah, can you tell us if you definitely heard John's voice when you took the position? The speaker never identified himself. But you clearly heard Rose Noel. I think so. You're full of shit. Martha, please. It is only because of your lies that they searched the Kermadex. That was John's fourth waypoint. It made sense to look for them there. Bullshit. Karen was there, she'll tell you. Uh, um, there was so much interference, we, we could hardly hear anything. We know nothing, that's the bloody truth. What we want is to search from this line 300 miles to the east. Funded by friends and family, another search has been mounted for the trimaran Rose Noel. Missing at sea now for nearly three months. 20 minutes of flying time in this direction before we turn around. It had taken nearly three months, but finally we were beginning to work as a team. Each of us had a role. We had food and water. We could have gone on forever. Well and adieu to you fine Spanish ladies. Well and adieu to you ladies of Spain. We have received orders to send for old England. Perhaps nevermore shall we see you again. Farewell and adieu, my fair Spanish ladies. Farewell and adieu, all you ladies of Spain. You think maybe we'll need a bigger boat? <laughs> <laughs> There was no point in telling the others. The ship was too far off to see us. It was better to spare them the disappointment.
Christ, you bastards! <laughs> it's land! It's land! <laughs> <laughs> Fix your eyes down, you son of a bitch! <laughs> I reckon we're about 10 miles out. John. You okay? John. Look at it. Man, it's real, mate. <laughs> I couldn't find words to describe how I felt. Relief, elation. Disappointment. I just knew it was coming to an end. Whatever that meant. Perhaps that was what I was afraid of. I didn't know. The others were looking forward to lives they could return to. But my life was here with what was left of my ruined Rose Noel. I had nowhere else to go. You know, we should have the record by now. Record? What record? 119 days in an overturned butt. It's gonna be some kind of record. <laughs> Jesus, John, who gives a toss? I told you, you blokes are gonna be famous. Let's concentrate on getting on land first. Yeah, I just want to get back to Karen and the kids. That'll do me. What? What can't be? When I was a kid, we used to go on holiday on the Great Barrier Island. Uh -huh. See that peak? Yeah. That looks like you're acting murder. The mountain on the barrier. Well, all mountains look pretty much the same from the distance. I worked it out. It must be an island of South America. Ah, uh, Mata, Mount Hobson. Oh, I reckon that's it. Well, how could that be possible? We've drifted thousands of miles in the other direction. You might be wrong. <laughs> Making landfall is always dangerous. The ocean striking a landmass can produce a short, confused seaway. Conflicting wind and currents draw you in like a magnet. John, Christ's sake, put it on. There's no need. No more bullshit. Put the bloody thing on. We could almost touch the land, but having no way of steering Rose Noel, we were in danger of being cast under the rocks. To the mast, hitting the seabed. If the mast were driven up through the hull, Rose Noel could break apart and throw us into the sea. You've got to get off the boat. We'll be all right, guys. We're being looked after. Fuck me, I'm going to swim. Through. I'm with you, mate. Too dangerous, mate. Stay with her, you'll be fine. Right. Go! Go! Come on, John! Come on, John! Swim! No, 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 one more go, one more go. Come on, mate! Swim! Come on, John! 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 Come on, Exhausted, but apart from a blow to the head and a twisted knee, I was okay. In the end, after months of constant danger, and during storm and tempest, we just drifted gently to shore. And when Rose Noel could take us no further, we slipped into the water and waded to dry land.
What are you doing, John? Train? <laughs> you blokes shouldn't have to worry. We're always going to make it. We should give thanks. <laughs> 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 oh, let's just be thankful we made it, mate, eh? That's enough. Of course we do. What'd I tell you? Right away. Beautiful. We're never in any danger. No one's. Thanks to you. A sail bag. Can you see it? John, we're off, mate. John, tell me that's not a Bahuda Carba tree. Toy toy. Definitely in New Zealand. This way, guys. Looks like a trek. Shock inside a real house after so long. Still think we're in South America, mate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Oh. I couldn't join the party. The feeding frenzy. Yeah. All I could think of was my poor Rose Noel drifting helpless in the bay. I wanted to return to her. But I didn't have the strength. Looking sharp there, buddy. Sharp scissors. Huh. Need a hand? No. I'm good. I'm really good. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. That was a sweet. <laughs> This house, we are four bloody lucky guys. Yes, we are. Mm. A toast. Tomorrow, with any luck, we find a phone and we get off this island. It's very unlikely the four of us will ever be alone again. Well, not like this. John, I want to thank you for getting us through this. It's because of you the Rose Noel was... Uh, Bountiful mother to us all. To John. Mm. I don't know why you were so certain that we were going to be saved. And please spare us any more of your crackpot theories, but... Although it's hard to admit, I... I guess you were right. In the end. 
Yes. <laughs> but I love you guys, and I hope. I hope that after all we've been through, we can remain friends. Famous friends. They'll give us all medals. Yeah. The friends. <coughs> oh, pudding. Can't sleep. How's your head? It hurts. Can I help you, blokes? Who the hell are you? Yeah, what are you doing in Jim's house? Where are we? What do you mean? Great Barrier Island? <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's going on here? Who are you? We're the crew from the Rose Noel. That trimarine that we're missing. That's right. You guys are supposed to be dead. <laughs> really good to see you. <laughs> a few hundred metres either side of that cove. I would have been filling out a report on four dead bodies. No chance. Didn't recognize you. Are you there? Oh, oh God, sorry, yes. Oh, darling. I don't believe it's true. It's really you. Yeah, it's me. Um, look, we're on, on Great Barrier Island. We're heading into Auckland, so get the first flight you can, eh? You and Maddie? Yes, I will. Oh, darling, I love you. I love you. Love you. Maddie, Maddie, it's Daddy. Yes. Oh, darling. See you soon, okay? Port of departure. Right. Date of capsize. Yes, of course I am. You're flying us to Auckland. Can you please get on the plane and, and meet me there? Please, Martha. Okay. Okay. Bye. So first, uh, okay, you mentioned the sightings of a freight. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> hey, sneaky poo. 
It's never be it. Hi, babe. Jeez, I missed you. Yeah, I know. I've really missed you. Yeah, well, you should get a... Get a plane. You get a plane to Auckland as soon as you can. Yeah. Did you have any doubts that you'd make it? Not one. Uh, why is that? Faith. Abiding faith. Mr. Glenning, I presume? Uh, yeah. Ross Lang, Marine Transport Division. This is Captain McKinley. Mind if we ask you a few questions? No. Did you keep a logbook, Mr. Glenning? Yeah. <laughs> any idea where it is now? This was so unexpected. Are you serious? Christ, can't this wait? If you want us to believe your story, Mr. Glenny, you'd better cooperate. After all we'd been through. What did you do for food and water all the time you were supposedly adrift? Um. Rick! <laughs> Come back! Stop it! Stop I struggled to comprehend how we could have survived so much and yet be treated with such suspicion. I don't know what these men have been doing for 119 days, but they haven't been drifting on the ocean. And it was only the beginning. We had no inkling of what we were about to walk into. No one would believe us. Damn it! Mary, please! Many people are wondering what power and spirit they had. These four men who spent July, August and September Ministry adrift Ministry of Transport the officials are to retrace the 119-day voyage of the Rose Noel with the use of a computer. Not too good to be true. We know Saltsaw is far too well fed. What have they there all the time? Who do they think they're kidding? Bloody drug smugglers, I reckon. They're having a thon. It is all bullshit. I, I don't believe a word of it. How did they keep floating around for so long without someone seeing them? Just impossible. It's just. On the yacht, okay, mate. It's just not humanly possible. I know what conditions are like that time of year. No yacht's gonna stay afloat for half that time, mate. Amid the euphoria, relief, and sheer joy at the survival of the crew, some serious questions arise. The transport minister has asked for a preliminary investigation into the crew members' claims of the 120-day ordeal, which has attracted widespread skepticism. So what do you say, John, in response to those who don't believe you? Is there an alternative story? You know, I... I couldn't give a stuff what anybody thinks. Jim, check it out. John's on the telly. We were adrift all that time, survived, only because we were careful, clever, and looked after each other. For the rest of my life, I'll be grateful to Phil and Rick and Jim circumstances that were the best men I could have hoped for. If you're watching this, guys, I thank you. We needed a miracle and we got one. Skipper John Glenny claims his yacht was capsized by a huge shit. wave three days into their voyage. But now, after surviving 119 days drifting at sea, the Rose Noel broke up in a storm yesterday. Mr. Glennie returned to the wreck by helicopter, accompanied by Marine Division investigators who were trying to piece together the final voyage of the Rose Noel. Go and have a look at this. I might have been wrong. It's perhaps New Zealand's most miraculous survival story ever. How four men and an upturned boat could drift on the high seas without trace for nearly four months and lived to tell the story. So remarkable was their tale of survival that some began to doubt that it ever happened. But a report released today backs up the incredible saga.
This inquiry with detailed scientific evidence supporting it has demonstrated that this is absolutely true and in fact is one of the great stories of human survival on the seas. Rose Noel skipper John Glennie describes the report as fair and thorough. Glennie says it answers the doubts some people had. Sadly, eight months after our return, Rick died of a brain tumour. Jim helped take care of him and then trained as a nurse. Phil went back to sea. He even made several voyages across the Pacific and fathered another child. But despite the ordeal, we had survived so well together. After we left the island, I never saw Rick, Jim or Phil ever again. <laughs>